and Tan was unable to fix Greg's bike so they're gonna try and get a replacement for it around lunchtime. Put some spring on the yeah, because yeah, the spring is broken. Tam had tried to fix the shifter on Greg's bike, but it really wasn't working. So we would need to find a replacement or a repair. In the previous video, I mentioned some of the best things about motorcycle riding in Vietnam. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the challenges. Watch until the end for that. Greg's bike is getting worse and worse and can barely, barely clutch or shift at this point. So he's on one of the little bikes. Our guide, one of our guides is going to take his bike. <laughs> but it's fun. Oh 
that you got me, yeah, you got my heart. Come to me and slow for me, towards me, yeah. I'm following you, take me up into the sky. Yeah. on the mud hill and my chain is clacking again. We're waiting Go. My cold has gotten much worse overnight and we still haven't addressed Greg's bike. I got some cold medication. Doesn't look anything like any cold medication I've ever seen. But we'll give it a try. Tan has found a shop to try and get the bike repaired, but they only deal with scooters and are not comfortable trying this big bike. The third shop we found would deal with the big bikes, and over the period of about two hours, they managed to pull the broken part, send it out to a machine shop, build a new one and stick it back in. So what is this road called? No idea. <clears throat> okay. It's obviously fairly well known.
Well, day six, halfway through the tour, and a really beautiful valley. Very busy. First time we've seen white people in days. Uh, lots of Europeans doing little scooter tours where they have a Vietnamese driver and they ride on the back of the scooter. <laughs> was telling me that this area had no road up until about 10 years ago or at least it was very rocky and very uh, muddy and that it's populated by the I think he said Wan people who are of Chinese descent and they were pushed into this area f with wars and this was an area where they could be left alone to try and make a living It looks like a lot of hard work. That is quite amazing. What, what is the name of that town down there? Duangpu. Duang. And the name of the people that live there? Hmong. Hmong. And they're from like Chinese descent. Uh, I think they are originals from uh, Tibet. Oh, really? They moved uh, yeah, further down with the Chinese uh, south in China. And then uh, to Vietnam too. Wow. Among like people uh, immigrated to Vietnam maybe four or five hundred years ago. Wow.
that you got me, yeah, you got my heart. Come to me and slow from me towards me. I'm following you, take me up into the sky. This was one of our regular drink stops. And something that was at every single one of these was what I started to think of the trash can pipe. They have these bongs that everybody uses and they're usually sitting in a trash can and you just put a little wad of tobacco in it and have one hit off it, throw it back in the trash can. Very different. This was a third group that was out with the company at the same time, the Italians. They were hardcore. As you can see, there are some amazing things about riding motorcycles in Vietnam, but there's also some challenges. Number one challenge is the traffic chaos. It is truly uh, scary the first few times you ride in Hanoi. Um, everybody's going every which way, they don't seem to follow any rules, and it really freaks you out at first, but surprisingly you get used to it. Another challenge is there's a lot of plastic garbage uh, strewn all over the place, which is a real shame because it's a beautiful country and hopefully that will start to change uh, soon. I saw a group of school kids out picking up garbage, which uh, suggests to me that maybe there's some work that's happening on that now. The other thing that's a challenge is food hygiene. If you are a North American germaphobe, do not come here. Uh, the me meals are communal in the sense that all the dishes are on the table and you have a very tiny bowl and everybody is grabbing stuff from the, the communal dishes uh, throughout the meal. And yeah, there's just some things that you see that as a North American kind of freak you out. Hard mattresses everywhere outside of Hanoi, uh, except for maybe two places, we have had mattresses that are basically like sleeping on a plank. Uh, an internet friend, uh, said to me, take your air mattress with you, and that was some of the best advice I got before I came on this trip. Another challenge is the mud, which you've seen in this video. Uh, this whole country is made of mud, and they've perfected growing rice in wet mud patties, um, and it is a challenge when you're riding. And one of the other, not so much a challenge, but just one of the things that you notice is that old Vietnam is disappearing very fast. This country is developing very quickly. So get over here and experience it before it is gone.
Tam told me later this was a big party meeting and he was a little worried because we were supposed to have a permit for the border region, but we didn't have it yet. This little tourist traffic jam is all about the remarkable viewpoint just ahead. This is one of the first places that we've been where we've seen quite a few white people and they come in on tours and to see the mountain passes and uh, there's a world UNESCO site here as well. Well this is the nicest hotel room we've had on the road for sure. The other ones have been a little, a little commissary like. <laughs> 